Hey guys, Hubbing Hands here bringing you the latest analysis and review of the patch notes from June 2021 for Company of Heroes 2. So without further ado, let's start with the British forces. So with the Brits boys, the AVRE no longer has its turret turned towards enemies. Let's say we want to focus on the MG. Normally the turret would, would turn towards the enemy, right? But now we can move up, focus on the target, take the shot without the turret deviating on, of its own free will to get the, the shot off onto the enemy unit or vehicle, whatever you want to shoot there. Now, this is a great change, guys, as the fact that the turret did deviate beforehand gave your opponent enough time to retreat away from the danger. Uh, and now, hopefully, that won't be the case because your turret is going to be there ready to fire immediately because the delay it takes to then turn from a, a distracting target and then back to where it needs to fire is maybe a couple, you know, quite a few seconds, right? And that's plenty of time for our opponent to get away. So this is a really good buff to the AVRE. So guys, I also just want to show you guys here that with the forward assembly, you can now get the upgrade, the forward retreat point upgrade alongside the observation post upgrade. So they both can be on at the same time here. Also, with the Commander Tactical Support Regiment, we now have access to a brand new unit, the Raid Section. Now the Raid Section is a five-man squad. An infantry section of Tommy's has been trained. They can come right at the start of a match, right from the get-go. They cost 280 manpower and eight population cap. So 10 manpower more expensive than your four-man infantry squad. What, what bonuses do they get compared to other squads? They can capture points and decapture points 25% faster. So here we have a raid section, guys, an infantry section. I'll get them both to capture the point pretty much the same time. So here we go. And you'll notice here that the raid section will be able to decapture the point a lot faster than an infantry section. This is a munition and fuel point. Pretty much they you cap these at the same kind of uh, rate. And you can see here... That 25% faster is coming in handy there. So we've already decapped it and we've started to recapture it and they're still waiting to decap. So you get the idea there. Also, the raid section, they cannot build cover like normal infantry sections do. So you can see a normal infantry section can get themselves down a trench and some sandbags, whereas the raid section cannot. They do have access to the Molotov once tier one has been... So once you've gotten your uh, platoon command post up, so once you've got that built, you can then lob Molotovs. And there's a fast Molotov throw there. And they can also do like a conscript hurrah. But theirs is a sprint. So they can get behind enemy support weapons and things like that a lot faster. Once they get Veteran C1, they can then put down mines. Like so. Pretty much exactly the same as... Yeah, it's the same mod M6 modified mine that the engineers get, the Shappers get. As you can see, I'm clicking on Sapper Squad here. And it's the same cost and exactly the same mine type. The, the Ray section as well... Once you unlock the weapon racks in the base, like so, Units can now use peered launchers to and you're in friendly territory, we can then upgrade this for 120 munitions. We can get two guys upgraded with Vickers K machine guns. And they're very good and they can fire on the move now. If you decide to go for an infantry section, for instance, at the base, a raid, get a new raid section out. Infantry and let's say you decided to give them one Bren gun. You can still upgrade one Vic Vic Vickers K for 60 munitions like that. So you can have a bit of both if you fancy. So one other quick thing, guys, about the raid section. The raid section does not receive the accuracy benefits while in cover like a normal section will do. But again, when it's out of cover, it also does not receive the, the penalties that are, not, are applied to a normal section when out of cover. So it's more of an aggressive section that you want to be pushing forward and being aggressive with, especially the fact that, you know, it's equipped with, like, machine guns and stuff like the Vickers K machine gun later on down the line, and with the Molotov and with the sprint ability. It's all focused around kind of being aggressive and mobile with, with this specific section. On to the next thing, which is the recovery sappers. Now, the recovery sappers can go for flight. They come up as well right at the start of a match now. They cost 250 manpower, I believe, and they can get flamethrowers now automatically, which is great. However, this does lock out their Minesweeper, so you can either have one or the other. When they have a flamethrower, they lose their ability to lob their smoke grenade. So let's just quickly make another one of these. Get the sweeper on. There you go. And now these have access to lob their smoke grenades. Like so. But this gives Brits a nice unit, maybe in the early game, to be able to displace units from cover and out of buildings. It's a five-man squad, 250 manpower. And now onto the OKW. So guys, now let's talk about the Special Operations Commander, as that's had some changes made to it. Specifically, it's been given now, the Sturm Officer, and the ability it's replaced was the Flare. However, the Flare has now been moved to the Command Panther, as I'll now show. 
So here we have the Command Panther, as you can see we just drive it around. You can see now we have artillery fares for 50 munitions on the Panther itself. So what you need to do is you press X or you click the ability itself and you can see a dotted ring around it. It tells you um, its minimum range where it can place it. So if I placed it, if I wanted to place it here, the Panther will have to drive a little bit further forward. But you have to get the Panther there, it then drops the flare and then you can reverse it back and then a few seconds later a flare will appear in the sky like normal like you would see previously and you get a lot of vision of that area so now rather than just being a no-brainer ability well, like it was before just to drop it on the map and easily just get a free kill on any artillery you have to now get your panther in position to then drop the flare to then get you know to then obviously get the vision to then drop artillery potentially on like a enemy howitzer for instance there's now some kind of strategical thought now going into it rather than just being a no-brain ability and let's now go on to the officer itself so the officer is the same stone officer as beforehand however now with this commander he's got access to infiltration grenades and they go normal 20 mission infiltration grenades they all love grenades like like before like so and that is good to take out maybe clumps of infantry and things like that also, I want to talk about Radio Science, guys, from the Special Operations Commander. Radio Science has been nerfed. It now makes a distinctive noise when you press it. All units initiate radio silence. Initiate radio silence. Command out. That little static sound that you heard at the end, that is here heard by both yourself and all the enemy players you're up against. So they'll be notified that this ability is being used. Also... Um, when activated, units get a, I believe, a 40% speed increase out of combat. As soon as they get into, into combat, they will lose this speed bonus, as I will now indicate. So let's just put down some conscripts here. They see the enemy, and look, there goes their speed bonus. They have lost it immediately as soon as they engage some enemies. So let's now talk about the OKW Commander fortifications. The heavy fortifications and field defences have been combined into one ability and they've added a new ability which is called For the Fatherland. So a few things to point out here. The Stern Pioneers are now the only unit that can put down the S mines. The Volks used to be able to do that. That's now moved to the, the Stern Pioneers. The Volks though can still put down barbed wire and bunkers. With this command you also have access to the LEFH, the flak emplacement as well as the pack 43 now the pack 43 its health has been increased the weapon of the of, of the actual gun itself has been increased so that allows it to possibly survive against um artillery strikes and things like that uh and also the lefh now all lefh's austere and okw variants have now lost their counter barrage ability because that was just too uh op frankly and now it's been removed in favor of an Airbus Barrage, which is now a Veteran C1 ability, which is very good against clumps of enemy infantry. Counter Barrage beforehand was just an ability you popped on and the LEFH just did the work for you. It was just a no-brainer to, you know, just a no-skill ability to click. So I'm glad that they have made the change. And uh, yeah, that's what's happened now with the, um, with the LEFHs. So here, guys, I thought I'd just give you a demonstration of the new Airbus Barrage. Here we have a clump of conscripts. Let's bombard these right now. So you can see it suppresses them and does some good AOE damage in the area of all the enemies. Very effective against infantry. And also, again, friendly uh, for the fatherland, you activate this, and for 30 seconds, your units get a bonus fighting in friendly territory. Infantry in friendly territory will receive a defensive bonus for the duration of the ability. There's the text there. Pretty straightforward. Another thing, guys, Panzer Fusiliers themselves, they can no longer pick up any other weapons if they decide to pick up G43s for 80 munitions here. They do still gain the six men, but as you can see, I cannot pick up any extra weapons. In the past, the G43s only took up, I believe, one weapon slot, and you were able to pick up some extra weaponry, but now that is no longer possible. I believe that is a fine nerf to the Panzer Fusiliers because they're already godlike at Veteran C5 with G43s anyway. I don't think they kind of need any more uh, DPS if they manage to pick something up, otherwise they'll become too unstoppable, and the only thing that can kill them is uh, getting wiped by artillery generally. If you decide to choose the Fire Stem Commander, Stern Pioneers can now get both the Flamethrower and the Sweeper. Previously, this wasn't possible. If you decide to pick Elite Armor, the 221 now gains Veteran C a lot faster. So, if it gets Veteran C a lot faster, you'll be able to utilize its Veteran abilities, like the Smoke, as well as when it gets Veteran C4 laying the anti tank mines of the Regal variety, which are very good at actually completely immobilizing vehicles. So, we might get to see more of this action down the line. And also the Sturm Seeker itself actually 
is now good again. Beforehand, many years ago, the Sturm Tiger used to be able to fire really well. Then its projectile was changed so that it messed up every time it fired. It would get impeded by, like, this fence would be in the way so the rail would hit the fence. Or, like, the wooden pallet would get in the way, for instance, over here. But now, if you watch this, I'll bring the Sturm Tiger over here. And now, it should be able to roll up and not be impeded by this piece of terrain here as I will now fire over this and shoot these T-34s like so. There you go. So you can rely on the Sturm Tiger now to actually hit the shot rather than miss, which it did a lot in the past. And now we move on to the Austere. Let's first talk about the Luftwaffe Commander, which has had some serious changes made to it. So the Luftwaffe Commander, what's new about it? So first of all, you can parish drop in medical supplies anywhere on the map for 30 munitions and you get this at 1 CP like so the great thing about these medical supplies is that if you've got a weak squad and you come over to this box and you pick it up your met your Pioneer will heal much faster than it would normally do if it was healed by a standard medic squad you can see here that it pretty much goes all the way up getting med medical uh, healing it all, all, all the way fully and you can also see here that having received the edge of supply in the form of medical supplies, the unit heals quickly out of combat and fights more effectively. So they also get a boost to their combat effectiveness as well. So actually power dropping these nearer to the front line, but safely near the front line so the enemies can't probably steal them, you'll get a really good boost. And it's not only you get it, any friendly new units and, and your teammates' units that are nearby will also benefit from this aura, this temporary aura, which is very handy. So that's 30 missions for three medical crates, which is very, very good. So here we're just going to test to see if one medkit heals a group of dudes. So here we go, we're going to pick up this medkit here. And you'll see that actually, yes it does. All One guy picked it up and all the squads here are benefiting from this drop. There we go. Look, and we're getting fully healed up from that one medical kit. Now let's also test this with friendly AI nearby. And let's make ourselves some friendly Volk squads nearby. Okay. So let's just now test it with friendly units nearby. So let's see if we all benefit from it. So I'll go up here, press this, and there we go. And yes, even allies benefit from it as well. Look at that. Glad I tested this because I didn't know this. Very effective heal. And it completely heals the squad up fully. Now I just want to see and test to see if we can heal through combat as well. I don't think we'll heal through combat, but let's just test it. So now we're under attack. Let's see if we can grab the medkit. Will we heal through the damage? Through this combat? No. We are not healing while in combat. So there you go. But once the enemy is destroyed, the aura is still persisting for a short while. And then look, then they then they benefit from the heal afterwards. As long as this takes place. And there we go. So, at two CPs, you can then call on the Luftwaffe Field Officer for 240 manpower. Now, in terms of his DPS and his capabilities, he's pretty much exactly the same as an artillery field officer, okay? Instead, though, he just looks slightly different, and his men that uh, come attached with him uh, are full shooting models, uh, but they still carry MP40s. Now, what makes him different from the artillery field officer is some of his abilities. So here, he has one of a really cool ability, which I love, which is a, app, it's a free... Stuka smoke drop ability. Takes 90 seconds to cool down, but, and it doesn't give you any recon when it flies overhead, but it's so good to have, you know, being able to have this as, as a free thing, which is amazing. And also, for 40 munitions, can do a recon pass. So obviously, you can feel the location of the enemy. So if we just turn off the fog of war real quick, and you can see the plane overhead, it's giving us vision all over the map that we don't see. Great. So that's a great way to then give you, you can recon yourself here and then use these extra abilities, the incendiary bombing run and the heavy bombing run, which is a brand new ability also added to the to the, to the game and the, this commander, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. Once the commander gets veteran C1, he then has the ability to call in a Stuka suppression run, which is good against enemy infantry. So again, we'll just quickly call in some, maybe some conscripts over here. So we could, we could, for instance, recon them. Like so. Find out they're there. And then we can strafe them with the plane afterwards. I don't believe any of these abilities share cooldown with each other. So now, 
I think I need to be close to do this, yes. Yeah, so I can see them drop in the plane here, and here comes the plane. It's just a suppression plane, so it shouldn't do too much damage to the infantry, but it will make them all suppressed. And that's cost you 50 munitions. I don't think that's great usage of your munitions there, to be honest, just to get the suppression, but it could, you know, help you out in a pinch if um, big flanks come and you need to, you know, to help cover the retreat of a unit, for instance, that could be fairly handy to have. But there you go. You've also got the standard diversion and the standard inspiring aura ability um, known for officers for the Austin. Next ability is the supply drop, which I believe you get at three command points. So this drops in a machine gun and a pack gun. This is exactly the same ability as you'd get in the Austrian commander. So here's the pack gun and the machine gun here. MG-34, and you get some extra munitions of fuel that you can grab here as well. So that's 375 manpower, you get 25 munitions and 10 fuel as well. Not bad at all. And you can drop this in for your teammates as well if you, if you feel like you want to help your teammates out. And you can give them a pack gun or a machine gun as well. So guys, now I'm going to show you the, the effect of the incendiary bombing run and the heavy bombing run. So we're going to lob the incendiary bombing run here and the heavy bombing run on the second set. So here we go, so you can see for yourself the difference between the two. These... So we're seeing that the incendiary bombing run, I believe, can be shot down. But also the, the heavy bombing run cannot be shot down. So if it doesn't brace, absolutely, completely demolishes it incredibly quickly. Very good against Sim City and infantry. So you get an idea there. We'll pop some Soviet infantry here as well with all this lot, and we'll just give you guys an idea of how much damage these heavy bombing run, this heavy bombing gun does. There's a mixture of uh, basically it's incendiary bombing combined with also HE explosives as well. HE explosives got a little bit better against um, infantry and things like that. Not too, not too bad against some of the armor. You can see here. Look at that. Completely demolished that T-34 there as well. So, yeah, definitely a lot more effective against armoured targets, this this bombing run, than obviously the other one, the incendiary bombing run. But here you go. That's 120 munitions, and that is 250. Hope you get an idea of how you could use those. So next, guys, I want to talk about joint operations as well as Festung support. As both these commanders have an awesome new ability, brand new to the game, which is the forward supply station. So what is the forward supply station, you may ask? Looks very similar to what the Soviets have. However, instead of six medics, it's actually six repair guys instead on the outside. How do you make a forward supply station? First of all, you need an ambient building like this one here, and it has to be in friendly territory. You can tell if it's in friendly territory by looking on the mini map, and you can see uh, the building icon about there, and you can see it's in blue, so it's in friendly territory. You then have to have a unit inside, because I can't just click on the ability here and then click on the house. You have to have a unit inside first. So we get these pioneers inside, and then we click on this, which costs 200 manpower and 45 fuel. And then you left click it on the ability, then you left click on the house, and then instantly you upgrade it like so. And, you, and then instantly six repair guys spawn around it, and they will go around and repair any vehicles that may be damaged. They won't repair buildings and things like that. As I will now indicate, let's get ourselves, for instance, a Schwerpanzer headquarters over here. There you go. So it's wounded, and these engineers are not interested in repairing that. Okay. We'll also, maybe, so I'll also just show you guys if we get a tank here, for instance. And then we'll wound this tank. And you'll see the engineers all try and rush out as fast as they can to repair the vehicle. There they go. Awesome. Also to note that this building, you can also reinforce units around it. So if we were to get rid of some squad members here. We can come up to the building and we have the reinforcement icon. Just to prove this, so we make sure we get rid of the Schwerpanzer headquarters as well. So you go, we've got the reinforcement icon. So if I just remove, go away from it, we'll lose the reinforcement icon as we get further away from the building. There we go, we get closer to it, and then boom, we can reinforce from the building. Like so, awesome. It's worth knowing that you cannot repair these this building. So if this building was to take damage, there you go. So the building's now taking some damage. We can't click on our pioneers, and we click Z to repair, but we cannot repair this building, because it's an ambient building. You're not allowed to repair these buildings, okay? So there you guys go. For 200 manpower and 45 fuel, you can build yourself one of these things. I'd always recommend to build the forward supply station 
on a concrete building or a stone building because it, those buildings are much more durable. I would avoid building them on like wooden shacks these, and tiny buildings like these because they're easier to, to collapse and stuff like that. So try and choose maybe a big meaty building like this or this building over here as they're a lot more, more durable. Having this ability also allows you to build repair bunkers. Like so, reinforcement bunker. For 300 manpower, not costing any munitions. So you can pop down one of these. And I believe these repair bunkers come with four repairmen. It's worth knowing, guys, that you can build as many of these bunkers as you have resources for. Um, it doesn't cost you any population gap, so you can spam these down. But I would always recommend, if you're going to put them a lot down in, a, in, in a, like a certain area, have them spaced around like this so they can't all be destroyed by one artillery strike. Always man a bit of space units around. And, and buildings. We can also get you garrison the bunker with a machine gun, so the MG can now shoot out this side if it wants to. We can change its direction, have it decide to shoot from the south side if we wanted to as well, and this side, and also the other side. You can shoot from every single direction, which is awesome. So yeah, you've got 360 degree coverage with this bunker, okay? And now we can see here we have the four repair dudes, one, two, three, four, around the bunker. So this is really good for team games, building these repair bunkers and things like that later on down the line. Really good, will help you know help quickly repair like maybe a King Tiger or a Yak Tiger, things like that. Be really helpful for your for your team. Let's move on to the Panzer IV command tank. So the Panzer IV command tank. We have been granted access to superior arms. Once you build, I believe, tier three, you'll have access to be able to call on the Panzer IV command tank. You've got to build it which costs 360 manpower and 100 fuel. They've changed the Panzer IV command tank in some regards. So the Panzer IV command tank has a smoke shell now, which is pretty much exactly the same as the Cromwell's ability, like so. Costing 20 munitions as well. It's also worth knowing, guys, that the, the, the Panzer IV command tank now has the ability to use Mark Target. It's the first time Ostia have been given that ability. Uh, OKW you can get it through their Panther command tank. Now I'll still finally get it through their Panzer IV command tank. So, but it has to be veteran C1. So combat, veteran C1. Now has access to this. And as you know, Mark Target allows you to a lot easier chances to penetrate enemy armor and do more damage, basically. So good against if you want to quickly take down an allied vehicle. And as, as you know, the Panzer IV command tank does give a friendly aura. As you can see here, this, this Pioneer is benefiting from this command radio net. So it takes reduced damage by being nearby, which is awesome. One other thing, guys, I forgot to mention is that when you're near a, a forward supply station, you also gain your vehicles, only vehicles gain a boost and they gain a reduction in uh, their reload. So they are allowed to fire faster, basically. Just to give you an idea. So you can see it's got the, the, the uh, thing around it. You have to be fairly close to the building. See, so we, we, we look like we're close there, but you need to be really, really close like that to, to benefit from that. So you need to stay around the building to benefit from this bonus. So now that we've put a Panzer IV command tank, not only do they all benefit from the faster fire rate, they also now benefit from the Panzer IV command tank as well. So you can combine the Panzer IV command tank with the building to get increased um, auras and obviously better damage outputs and defensive auras and stuff for all your troops, which is great. So there you guys go. And just to clarify guys, it is five command points to be able to build the forward resupply station alongside the reinforced repair bunker and also a correction to my earlier comment you cannot reinforce around a repair bunker but you can reinforce around a forward resupply station the stuggy has had some changes and the commanders that have this stuggy are as follows the defensive community commander as well as the mechanized assault commander the stuggy can now for 30 munitions upgrade a pencil map machine gun like so which is the same kind of machine gun pencil mount that the standard Stug gets. And also is able to do a smoke barrage, like so. It can go really far with this smoke barrage, up to here. And you get an idea. I think it fires off four shells. One, two, three, and four. There you go. And that is free. Doesn't cost you any resources to do that. So, give you some more utility, utility to the Stuggy. It still retains its heat shell of Vetra C1. So, Ostrupen still required Tier 1 to build. Let's just get some Ostrupen on the field really quickly. So, here you have your standard Ostrupen squads. 
Our stripper squads can now gain their MG42 once you've teched up to battle phase two. Previously, it was tier three they needed it, so you get the MG42 a little bit earlier. However, in the early game, they do suffer a little bit because they do do a little bit worse now uh, when in cover. They do beforehand. It was uh, two. It was 300% bonus accuracy while in cover. Uh, and now it's changed to 250. However, once they get Veterancy 1, they regain it back up to 300%. So there you guys go. It's a little change onto the Astroop in there. Also, with this commander, the Concrete Bunkers as well. As you can see here, same thing. You get the reinforcement, uh, Reinforced Repair Bunker. And also you can get the Reinforced HMG Bunker. But the cool, cool thing now, the change with this is, as we build this real quick, is that now you can reinforce around this when you previously could not do so. Okay, so we can re reinforce on this. Let's delete some members of this squad. There you go. And then we can reinforce one, two, three, like so. We can reinforce from that machine gun bunker, which is pretty damn good. So another quick thing, guys, about the elephant. The elephant can no longer upgrade spotting scopes. As you can see, a click on the elephant. We have spotting scopes available to be our, in our uh, commander as a commander ability. And you can see we don't have the option here on the right-hand side. We click on the 222, however, and we can see we can get the option. Now, this is this is a nerf to the elephant, but not a massive nerf because you generally want a 222 always with the elephant anyway, because the 222 with the spotting scopes gives the vision to the elephant, and even if the elephant had spotting scopes, the 222 would see further anyway, uh, especially when the 222 is veteran is made more vet veteran. So let's select the combat, veteran C3, for instance, or whatever. There you go, you can see all the way over to there. Also, commanders that have the hull down passive ability. No longer will you require pioneers to come up and initiate a hold down state on a vehicle. You can now just activate it by pressing C. It's free to do so. It takes a few seconds to set up. I believe it's 10 seconds. It comes in mobile while doing so. As you can see, I'm trying to issue move commands. It won't move. But you will gain increased vision and range of the vehicle that you have decided to initiate a hold down on. Vehicle crews may hold down their vehicles to improve weapon range and defensive capabilities. So generally, in, you know, you never really see anybody do hold down um, because it renders your vehicle quite vulnerable. But now you press C and you can immediately cancel that ability and get out of there if you if you want to do so, which is great now. So you haven't got to wait for pilots to come over and, and get you out of that that predicament. So if you decide that you want to get out of there and move, you can do quite easy with you know by just left clicking the ability and, you, and off you go. So nice, nice to change there the hold down ability and hopefully we'll see people use this more often. Next, we look at the Soviet Union, comrades. So guys, let's talk about the B4 Howitzer. It's now added to a second commander, which is the Tank Hunter Commander. It's still on the previous commander as well, which was the Counter-Attack Commander. And it now fires three shells instead of one. However, the payload does a lot less damage, as I will now show. So guys, here we have the B4. I will now fire it on this enemy blob of units, and you'll see what it now does. So here's the first round, so it fires three rounds. The payload is a lot is a lot less, but you get three rounds now. And if it hits the target dead on, like an infantry squad, it will wipe them. Squads nearby will see short, uh, suppression for a short amount of time. There you go. So that's the idea you get from that. I'll now show you guys a direct fire attack. This cannot be dodged generally. If once the shot has been fired, it will track the target. So here we go, watch the shot here. Direct fire. Does about 60% damage health to a Panzer IV, and that damage is 400. And uh, yeah, so it basically does the same amount of damage as a standard normal shell would do. So if I was to delete this unit here and replace it, and fire three sh and fire just a standard barrage on it if this standard shell would be direct you know directly onto the panzer four land directly on top of it it would do the same amount of damage as a standard direct fire shell would but direct fire will be 100 percent accurate there you go that shot was right on top of it did about 60 percent damage so there you go that is the, the basic the new b4 um, I kind of think it's maybe a bit too strong now because it's still got a really short cooldown timer. So guys, its cooldown is about 75 seconds, which I think is too short. It does so much damage and you can have two of these on the field absolutely r constantly raining havoc down against your opponent. Um, they still easily get one shot by uh, off, you know, an off-map artillery strike, but they are very, very effective. 
Another artillery piece which has had a change for the Soviets is the ML-20. The ML-20 now gets a smoke creeping barrage once it gets Vegin C1 for 30 munitions. I'll now show you this off. So you can see we can do the smoke barrage go from left to right, right to left, or up and down. So there you go, here's one example of the barrage. So this could be great if you want to maybe screen before you want to do a massive attack along a front line. Maybe you want to save it unit that's possibly getting wrecked and you may want to smoke it so it can retreat safely. A uh, nice bit of utility there now added to the ML-20. Brand new unit added to the Soviets for two commanders, which is the Lend-Lease commander as well as Soviet industry. They now get the Ziz supply truck. This is exactly the same as the Ostis Opal Blitz truck, which can set up on a resource point and generate more income for yourself, as I'll now show. So here we have the Ziz supply truck. It costs three CPs to call in, and it is 200 manpower, exactly the same cost as an Opal Blitz truck. And like the Opal Blitz truck, you come onto the point, you press Z, it unpacks the resources, and you'll see that you're getting double increase of the amount of resource that you set up on. So from 11, it should go up by 22. And if you come over to the fuel point, so our fuel income is is 17 here. So it should go up to 24. Let's do it. Boom. There you go. 24. There we go. So you want to use the Ziz supply truck on obviously the munitions point or the fuel point as these are points that you cannot over, uh, can't cash. You can't get an OP on. So you get your, your combat engineers. You can see this normal points you could put a fuel cache or a munitions cache on. But these points you cannot. So this is where the Ziz supply truck comes in. So you can get additional munitions or fuel, whatever you decide to go for. So guys, the assault guards no longer have to come in with a half track. They are 340 manpower come in with the commanders of the Lend Lease and as well as the anti-infantry tactics commanders. I will now go into detail on what changes have been made to them. So here we have the guard squad. They cost 340 manpower, 9 population cap and 2 CPs. Once you call them onto the field, you can upgrade them and spec them in two different ways. They have access to... The upgrade for Thompson, so they get three Thompson, so it makes them very good at close quarters combat, the 70 munitions, or they get two bazookas for 100 munitions, and these are elite bazookas, which are do more damage than your standard rifleman bazooka would do, for instance. So here we have two the two variants. We have the one with the Thompsons, and we have the one with the Zooks. And you can see here, they all have the ability here for 30 munitions to lob a lot of grenades down like this, which are very good against killing a lot of infantry. They're all clumped up like that. And they both get that kind of ability regardless if they, you know, whatever they spec. So this ability is very similar to the infiltration grenade ability that the OKW get. And the assault grens from Austin. It's also worth knowing, guys, that once the guards gain Veteran C1, they gain healing out of combat, which is great. So nice early game healing. And you can see they heal fairly quickly out, out of combat. So a unique perk to these types of guards. Now let's go on to the Parson Commander, as that has had some significant changes. So guys, Parsons has been merged into one unit. So Parsons can now, when they're called in, be spec to be anti-infantry or anti-tank. Here, for 45 missions, you can upgrade them with PPSHs. Like so. And they also get a fifth man. Notice how they all have PPSHs, so they're pretty good at close quarters combat. Let's call in another Parsons squad. Here's one over here. And we can then maybe upgrade this one to an anti-tank package for 60 munitions. Yeah, that, so there we go. We've got an AT one. Here we now have access to lob AT grenades. Even without having conscript package teched. Which is a bonus that they get. They can use first aid kits. Both variants can use first aid kits. But you see this one has access to molotovs as well as fragmentation grenades. And this one here only has access to the anti-tank grenade ability. However, you do have access to tank detection. Which allows you to spot tanks potentially through the fog of war, as I'll now show. So I've just hidden a stug around the corner there, activate tank detection, boom, now we can see on the mini-map that there's a tank there, even though we can't see it physically, we know it's there because it's on the mini-map, and if we can check to see what kind of unit it is by zooming over the map, and then we can see it is a stug. Also, version C1, they gain access for the concussive trap. So once we've captured a point, we can put a concussive trap on the point, both paths and variants can get this. It's kind of like a booby trap. So when they get to the point, they are temporarily stunned. They won't return fire for a, a split second. So it can help you get an ambush off, for instance. Only 10 munitions. It's also worth knowing, guys, that now 
Spy Network, this only now affects you. Previously, when activated, this allowed your entire team to see all the enemy locations for a short amount of time. Now it only works for you. Next, let's talk about the Soviet Reserve Army, as this has some changes. So guys, the Soviet Reserve Army now gets the Commissar Squad. So the Commissar is now another commander. And also, for 325 manpower, and at 3 CPs, you can airdrop in a Maxim and a Ziz gun for yourself, or teammates. Like so. Awesome. I think this is quite a nice commander. And you get access to the ML20 later on. And obviously the Commissar is a really, really good unit. Lots of nice abilities like force propaganda. Medical, you know, healing on the, on the map. Things like that. And uh, you can potentially just go tier 1 and then power drop in. You're just going to max them later on. So you can skip kind of tier, tier 2 when choosing this, this commander now. Thanks so guys. I want to talk about the 120mm mortar. It's now... The flare ability has been removed from this unit. It now has been replaced with a delayed fuse. Which is actually quite a nice ability. You get it at version C1. Like so. And then, this is very good against, like, fortified locations and things that can't move very quickly. Like pack guns and maybe machine guns. So you can see here, fires off a couple of shells. And it's a, it's a three second delayed fuse charge. And it's pretty decent against, as you can see here, this Schwerpanzer headquarters. There you go. So here is an enemy machine gun. Let's try use the delay fuse charge on this now. Not bad at all. You'll probably get the first one off before your opponent has to retreat. Has time to retreat. But if the opponent is not paying attention, he will potentially lose his entire unit there. Also, guys, just want to talk about the IL-2 Stamovic rocket run for the Airborne Commander. This has been nerfed. This is no longer as effective as it used to be. Its penetration has been reduced because it was just too good at taking down Axis heavies. This is what it looks like now. There you go. It's about 40% damage down there. And that was on the rear of the vehicle. And finally, let's talk about the changes to some American units. So guys, here we have the Bulldozer Sherman. This has received some buffs. Its armor has gone from 200 to 215. Speed from 5.3 to 5.5. Acceleration from 1.6 to 1.8. Basically, it can move around the map a lot faster now. And move away from a stopping position. A lot quicker as well. It also has now gained a new ability. If I was to go give it version C1, now has access to a similar ability which the Brumba has, which is a 35 munition howitzer barrage. You can see here we can lob it quite far away, and you'll see it fires off quite a few shells at long range towards the enemy. Quite handy against pushing out, out maybe a machine gun or a pack gun that might be end up causing you some pain. Or just some, you know, just generally an infantry blob. There you go. So that's the bulldozer. Nice. Good buff to it. So guys, here we have two Easy 8s. One Easy 8 has been upgraded with the Browning Machine Gun. So obviously it increases its DPS against infantry. But you can also upgrade now a tank commander for 25 munitions. It improves the accuracy and vision of the unit. So this is how much we can see at the front line. If I was to upgrade the tank commander, you can say we gain a little bit of extra vision. Not much, but it's, it's a slight increase. You get 10% sight and you get 10% more weapon accuracy there. Also, when you get when you either Sherman, either variant with the with a pencil machine gun, um, you can have focused gunnery at version C1. Basically, what this does is increase the range of penetration at the cost of speed and mobility. So you get 20% more pen, increase your range by 10. However, your speed and rotation and acceleration and deceleration has been reduced by 25%. So there you go. So if you wanted to push in and take out an enemy tank, you might want to pop this on, but you know, you've got to realize that you're going to have a, a debuff to your unit as well. So it's not just a straight buff up there, but it's pretty cool. ECA has kind of got a little bit more um, versatility and, uh, you know, separates it from just, you know, your standard Sherman, which is pretty sweet. 
So the Greyhounds had a buff to it. His canister shot is five munitions cheaper. That's all the change for that. The Calliope's received a nerf, and its armor has been reduced to 110 from 160, which is quite massive. And uh, its health has gone from 400 to 320. So basically, it's a lot easier to kill, and you need to make sure that it is safe, basically. Treat it as a very valuable and fragile piece of artillery now. So guys, let's quickly talk about the Pershing. I believe the Pershing has received a buff. Basically, it is now a lot faster to repair. And its Vision C2 now provides a 10% speed bonus, as well as a bonus reload. It's still a Vision C3. Vision C3 Pershing is already godlike, but now it's even better, as it's now gone from a bonus of 30% 30, 30 to 35%. So it's even better in the late game once it's Vision C3. Also, its hate uh, piercing round of 50 munitions is now standardized at 1000 penetration across the board at all ranges also the wc51 when it now gets damaged it has access to a 20 munition crew repairability previously the uh, wc51 uh, you'd have the crew jump out and repair itself then they removed that but now they've given it the, the a brand new ability to the unit so it can repair itself out of combat obviously it can't move it's vulnerable like this and it doesn't heal it fully, but you get around about, what, 40% health there repaired? Not bad at all. And uh, there you go, the 20 munitions. Let's go on to the M10. Now, the M10 has received a quite, a, quite a considerable buff, in my opinion. Its Vection C3 reload bonus has gone from 20 to 35%. Flanking speed bonus from 10 to 30%. And flanking speed now provides a 20% horizontal traverse speed, so it can turn its gun a lot faster so it already is quite fast than turning its turret but let's now just give it um for instance we'll activate flanking speed so you activate that but then it misses it's super quick we want to turn the turret around it's and the turret turns faster than normal now so the m10 has received a pr pretty good buff there to make it more likely that you will want to use this unit so there you guys go. That is the end of the video. I've covered all the points that I thought were worth mentioning. And uh, there are some things I didn't talk about, however. But if you would like to check them in your own time, there is the link to the patch notes in the description below. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you found this interesting and you learned something. And I hope, guys, you'll do some new strategies and change things up now that the patch has hit. See you on the battlefield. Take care. Hi, lads. Thanks for watching that video. If you want more content, click up here. Or click over here to click on other content. But make sure to click on that middle button to subscribe to the channel. Okay. And I uh, stream every single day on twitch.tv forward slash helping hands. Catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.